For our first experiment, we're going to build a battery. And we're going to build it using our nails, and we're going to arrange them in various ways. We're going to use, again, a piece of fruit, a potato, a lemon. I'm using a lemon, obviously, for this experiment. We're going to need our voltmeter to measure voltage, like we did with circuits a while back. That's going to be our kind of proxy for electricity. Uh, I'm going to want a couple of wires just to make things a little easier to hook up and some sandpaper you may or may not need to use the sandpaper it depends on whether or not uh, you're getting results if you're not getting anything it either might be because you're not going to get anything or there could be a little oxidation and to, to just kind of check that we can just sand the surface a little bit you don't have to sand that much hard off um, you can get an oxide layer they call it it's oxygen on the surface and that can interfere a little bit but for the first pass just try and see what works and what doesn't work. And then if you're getting no result, you can go back and sandpaper a little bit. With our nails, we have five different types of nails in here. We have a copper nail. Uh, we have a brass nail. It looks a little bit gold colored. We have aluminum nail. It's very light gray and very light when you lift it. Uh, we have a zinc nail. It's uh, kind of a dark gray and I have some ridges on it. So this is a zinc nail. And then we have an iron nail. It's your darkest dark gray color. That'll also feel a little heavier than the other nails. So that's your, your iron nail. The experiment itself is fairly straightforward to do. Pick a couple of locations on your uh, lemon, whatever it is, and just put the nails in. They can either be kind of in close or far away. You're gonna do measurements across you're going to do a measurement as a function of distance. So I'm just going to start far away. I'm going to say start with my um, zinc nail on one end and my copper nail on the other end. So those are the poles, the terminals of my battery. I'm then going to get my voltmeter ready to go. So I'm just going to just clamp these little clamps onto the end of those probes. And I'm just gonna hook it up. I don't know what's the quote unquote right way to hook it up right now. So all I know is I'm going to hook it up like this, right? Remember the red wire is the positive terminal that I've plugged into voltage and the black wire I plugged into the COM of my meter that's the, the negative or ground end. And then we're gonna to wanna to measure voltage, which again, remind yourself that when we did our measurements, they were over here. Now, the most sensitive reading is the one that says 200 M, so that's where I'm gonna initially go. And what I immediately notice is, is that I get a one with a bunch of blanks here. What that means for the vo this voltmeter is, is that the voltage this lemon is putting out right now is too high for this scale, which can only do up to 200 millivolts to read. So the way I go to fix that is I turn it to the next setting. I go to here, and now I see that I'm getting 915. Now remember, this scale is in millivolts, and a millivolt is a thousandth of a volt. So if I wanted to convert this into volts, I would do 0.911, it's kind of flipping in that last digit, maybe 0 0.910 volts. So this is 907 millivolts, which is 0 0.907 volts. Now it's gonna decrease a little bit. This is just how this chemical process works. Don't worry about it. Just trying to get a, an approximate measurement. Don't obsess about that last digit. Just write down what you see. If it had still been a one with a bunch of blanks, I could have gone up to the next scale and that would have uh, get, allowed me to read it. Now, no, this scale is 20 volts, 20 volts. So this reading is in volts, it's point eight, nine volts. But you always want the most sensitive reading that you can handle because it gives you the best precision in doing your measurement. So that's how you measure the voltage of your various objects. We're gonna have you do a couple of experiments. We're gonna have you uh, explore all of the permutations of the nails that should be in the table uh, in the um, in pocket lab. Now, one thing I want to note is, is let's imagine that I had hooked these up the other way. 
that I had made my copper the negative and my zinc. Notice all that happened is I'm getting the same number, but it's going to be negative instead. So one of the questions we're going to ask is which material is producing the positive voltage? Notice I have this hooked up backwards. I have zero on the copper and the zinc is negative relative to the copper because that's hooked up to the positive terminal. That means this is at the higher potential and hence is positive. If that was a little confusing, that's okay. The other way to do this is, is to say, well, if I see a negative number, I'm just going to flip my wires. And whatever wire is hooked up to this positive uh, input is the positive voltage, which in this case, again, is the copper. Once you're done exploring all the permutations, we're going to ask you to take the permutation that gave you the largest voltage. By the way, always put them in at the same point for that first set of experiments. So just keep reinserting them. If, the, if it gets a little bit loose, that can be a problem. Just go off to the side a little bit, but make sure you're keeping them roughly the same distance apart. And then for the next part of the experiment, we're going to have you measure at least three, preferably four different distances by decreasing the distance between them by a centimeter. So you'll start one centimeter apart, two centimeters apart, three centimeters apart, and four centimeters apart. Hopefully you can get to that. If you can get to five, even better. We'll ask you to do that as well. But it, depending on the size of the fruit you have, that can be a little bit of a problem. So we're going to have you explore, does distance matter when you go between these two things? So this is acting like a battery. Now, we can't actually find out what the power is because remember, if you think back to circuits to do power, we would have to know current. And we don't know the current of this, and so therefore we are unable to calculate how much power is being generated by this uh, lemon.